Hey, thank you for joining me for our first of the new challenge series. So the challenges are going to work like this. I'm going to teach you a basic art concept. And then at the end of the day, I'm going to challenge you to create an artwork using that art concept. So it's going to be awesome fun. And along the way, you're going to really learn how to boost the likability and saleability of your artworks. So to get the show rolling, we're going to start off with patterns. So I'm going to show you how you can use patterns to really add a heap of extra interest to your artworks. Let's head over to the computer and I'll show you how it works. When we think about patterns, we think about images like this, right? Where each part of the pattern is identical, but there are many more ways that we can use patterns to make incredible works of art. Let's start by looking at the definition of a pattern. A pattern is an arrangement of repeated parts or decorative designs. The key here is the word repetition. In order to get a pattern, we need to repeat something in such a way that the repetition becomes noticeable to the eye. Traditionally, we think of patterns as being man-made. And we do enjoy creating a good pattern, don't we? Usually to decorate something like these ties. Or to make something look neat, like this shop. And sometimes we create patterns inadvertently because that is the best and most practical way to do it. Like the repetition of the offices in this building. Nature, on the other hand, we tend to think of as random. And in general, it does appear that way. But if we really start looking around, you'll find that there are plenty of patterns in nature. How about the petals on this flower? Or the wings on this butterfly? These are classic examples of patterns in nature. Patterns don't, however, need to be perfect copies of each other to form a pattern. Take a look at this pattern again. Here we actually have two patterns in one. The scale effect forms a perfect repeating pattern. But if you look at each scale individually, their pattern is formed by increasingly smaller arches, creating an irregular pattern. But it's still a pattern and we can recognize it. And here's a typical irregular pattern you will find in nature. We have a pattern of rocks, yet each rock is a different size, different shape, and each rock is even lying in a different direction. Yet, we can still recognize it as a pattern. So how do we recognize this as a pattern, and how can we use it to make our artworks look more interesting? The most common method to create a pattern is to repeat shapes. But there are other methods, and let's take a look at those ones now. The next is to repeat objects, like the bricks in a wall. And how about repeating directions, like the lines in this cupboard? And here's an interesting one, repeating changes. In this pattern, each line changes direction and gets gradually longer and longer and longer. But it's a recognizable change. We can even create a pattern by using a central point. All the patterns in this dome radiate outwards from the central cap. We can repeat colors, repeat images, and even repeat brush marks. Each brush stroke in this artwork is identical. And we can use these patterns to make our artworks look more interesting by varying whether we repeat the pattern at regular or irregular intervals. And this allows us to create different effects, atmospheres, and even emotions in our artworks. Keeping our pattern regular gives it a more structured and formal feel. There's a sense of order and calm in the artwork. And when we use irregular patterns, we can create a busy, energetic effect, sometimes even conveying chaos if the pattern is irregular enough. Here are some examples of irregular patterns, so you can see what I mean. So here's irregular shapes. And notice how chaotic these repeated shapes look. Irregular objects. This rock wall 
gives a rough and organic look as a result. Irregular directions, each branch of this tree is heading in its own direction to form fabulous flowing patterns. Irregular changes, each of these lines are changing, but none of them are changing the same, giving the artwork an abstract feel. Here's an irregular central point. All these circles are converging around a central point, but not radially like the spokes of a bicycle. And can you feel the tumbling effect that it creates? Here's an example of irregular colors. These tiles all have random colors, yet they still work well together. In this artwork we have irregular images, so each image is different, yet they still form a pleasing pattern. So now that we know how to identify the different types of patterns, let's see how artists have used them in actual paintings. Pet Mondrian has used irregular shapes and colors to create paintings that have become absolute classics. Andy Warhol famously used patterns of regular images combined with irregular colors to create his pop art prints. And Roy Lichtenstein used irregular changes and shapes to create his artwork entitled Woman with a Flowered Hat. Here are a few more paintings with patterns in them. Pause the video on each to see if you can recognize which methods we used. Now we come to something that can really make your artwork stand out, and that is to break the pattern. This can be done in many ways, but the idea is to add an unusual element to your pattern. When you look at a pattern, your brain is soothed by it because of the repetition. It likes to look at patterns because that's how our brains operate. We recognize everything we know because our brain has memorized that item's pattern. And that's why we immediately notice when somebody has colored their hair a different color. That color differs from the pattern that our brain has memorized. In other words, the minute you break the pattern, your brain instantly takes note and pays extra attention to this break in pattern in order to figure out what's different. If you then break the pattern in your artworks, the item that breaks the pattern becomes the focal point. Here's a classic example. You paint the artwork in monotone and then just add a dash of color to the focal point. You can, however, use any of the methods that we've discussed to break the pattern. In this example, the pattern of the flowers is broken by the heart-shaped pendant. There you go. Now you know how to use patterns. All right, so here comes the challenge. Your challenge is to take at least one of the pattern methods and create an artwork using it. So you can either use a regular pattern, an irregular pattern, or even a combination of both irregular and regular patterns in the same artwork. Then you're going to use something to break the pattern to create a focal point in your painting. Sounds like an interesting challenge. Are you up for it? I know you are. So the information on how to join the challenge is below. Have fun. I'm looking forward to seeing what your artworks look like.